So today we are going to dig into lesson three. So let's review a little bit about um, Kwame sound. Why did Kwame want to represent sound in the story? So he can get the music to Kofi so they can practice. Exactly, very good. So today I told you you're going to be an acoustical engineer. All right, so I'm going to set you up into a situation, okay? I need you to close your eyes really, really tight. You are deep in the rainforest with field biologists. All of a sudden, you hear the call of the endangered speckled bubble bird. No one has heard the bubble bird call in more than 50 years. But, oh no, you forgot all your recording equipment back at the camp. The field biologists need you to help them find a way to remember those sounds. So you need to somehow record the call of the speckled bubble bird so that you can re show it to the other biologists. Okay, are you up for it? Yes. All right. Think about your sound properties that we talked about. What sound properties do you hear? Speckled bubble bird alarm call. So raise your hand and share what you just heard. It was high pitch. Okay, I'm gonna write that. Go ahead. I'm adding to Abigail and also when it started it was kind of like a low pitch, like ooh. So you had we had high pitch and we had some low pitch. What are the other properties of sound? Okay. We just talked about the pitch. What about the other properties? Volume. Raise your hand, please. Ariana? Um, it changed volume with the first one. It was like low, then it got higher, and then the second time it did the same thing except not go really high. Okay, what's the difference between pitch and volume? Um, pitch, volume determines how loud or soft it is, and pitch volume determines is loud and soft, how high and low it is. And pitch is high and low. I'm going to play it again, and I want you to think about what, think about what you just said, okay? Speckled bubble bird alarm clock. Like, it was the same noise, but like, it was just more louder. Yes, okay, so that means the pitch stayed the same. It was just louder, okay? All right, open up your books to 3-1, okay? I'm gonna play, I'm gonna play the song again, and I want you to listen to the pitch. When you, when you hear the pitch that's low pitch, you're gonna keep your hand down. When you hear it high, you're gonna raise your hand, and then when you hear that in between, you put it here, okay? Speckled bubble bird alarm call. How many times did the pitch change? Five. 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 So if we were to represent this call, how could we represent the call on, on paper? If we were to somehow represent, you're not writing anything yet, I want you to think about it. Think about Kwame. How did he represent the sounds that he was doing in the kitchen with his sister? What did he use? They used um, the, the yams and the plantains. Used all the, 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 um, the yams, the plantains, okay, all the different things that they had in the kitchen. We don't have that stuff here. How could we represent low pitch on paper? Uh, like a straight line. A straight line? We could do that. Okay, so if we did um, a low pitch with a straight line, like that, how could we do a high pitch? How could we represent a high pitch? You could do like an arrow like this. Maybe put an arrow up for high pitch. How about that middle pitch, the medium pitch? So how did we represent the different pitches in the sound, in the call? Well, can we, can we use like a spectrogram to show them? Well, you tell me. Um, yeah. Look at, look at, if we're using representations of the sound, using symbols, is that kind of like a spectrogram? Mm -hmm. Thumbs up if you agree. Yeah? I agree. Is that okay? Yes. Can we do that? Mm -hmm. So now my other question is, thinking of properties of sound, okay, we identified pitch and volume, 
There's another property of sound that we didn't talk about the other day, and we're going to talk about today. It's called duration. Turn and talk. What do you think that word means, duration? I usually cut the batteries last in a controller, like a double A or an energizer. Like, maybe that means duration. Maybe the duration it would mean short to last. He got, he's, he's correct. Tell them what you said to me. I said duration means how long something can last, like a double-A battery. Yeah, how long something lasts, this double-A battery commercial, you know, keeps on going. Duration is the length. How can we apply that to the bird call? Ariana? How long does the call last? Do you think you could try and show that on paper somehow? Want to try it? I want you to represent that call. Or I use bars to represent what? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, I just saw something different. Look at this. Look at this. How did Jenna represent the sound and the change in the pitch? She used circles instead of boxes, which is very similar to the, the graph. Davian just said you could use almost anything. Is that true? You're the acoustical engineer. You can decide. So the only thing that changed in the first call was the pitch. OK, so now we're going to listen for the flight call of the speckled bubble bird, the flight call, and see how different that is. Speckled bubble bird flight call. What? Step one. Turn and talk. What did you hear? I like the volume went down and then went up and went up. Yeah, but that was just a That's the volume changed. How many parts did you hear? How many parts? We might have to play it again. How many parts? I heard four. Four? Four. four. So I'm going to play it again. While you're listening for the four parts, what happens in each of those parts? What's the pitch in each of those parts? Raise your hand if you think the pitch stayed the same throughout the whole call, all five, four parts. What are you hearing that's changing if it's not the pitch? The volume. the volume. I'm going to do it one more time and then I want you to represent it on the paper in the box below. I'll be right there. Okay, so you can make your adjustments. So what do they what does an acoustical engineer call that when we make adjustments? What step is that? Improve. Improve, yeah. So we're making adjustments, you're improving your representation. Very good. Okay, boys and girls. What steps in the engineering process have we done today or have we done since Monday? We've done the ask stage. We're like, we've done the ask stage. We've done, done the imagine stage. We've done, done the plan. <laughs> <laughs> no, we didn't do plan yet. Yeah, we did plan because I think we're going to make our, our own calls. We haven't created yet. Yeah. So the only thing we haven't done is created. So you just completed a your job as an acoustical engineer. You were able to create that representation of that bird call. Tomorrow, you're actually going to start at the very beginning of an acoustical engineer's job, the very beginning with that asking stage, and go all the way through the whole thing, the whole process, to identify a bird call a, from a real bird. So you're going to be listening to real birds Okay, and you're going to create a representation of that call.
when I was instructing them on, for lesson three, wasn't sure how they were going to react and whether or not they were going to be able to be given that time to discuss and create together without my help. And it worked out fabulously. Um, very rare did they ask for assistance and they just kind of fed off each other and that was, um, they don't get to do that too often, um, listening to the teacher at the front of the room a lot. I myself as a teacher would like to do more of those activities and so I do plan on um, really bringing in the EIE more for next year.